Hello, fourth graders, and welcome back. I am Mrs. Lamondo here to bring you our Fontes and Pinnell mini lesson of the day. So let's get started. Today we are at LAU6 lesson four. Poets often use imagery to make you see, hear, and feel things. Let's listen to the book of poems on the wing. As we listen, think about what you see in your mind and what you imagine. Hi there, are you ready for a read aloud? Today's book On the Wing, Bird Poems and Paintings by Douglas Florian. We're going to have a lot of poems this time about birds. On the Wing. Here's my table of contents, the titles of all of the poems, and the page numbers that they're found on. So if I were to look at my table of contents here, and I were to find the poem about the hummingbird, what page would I need to look on? Can you find it? Yeah, the hummingbird would be found on page 14. How about if I wanted to read a poem about a hawk? You find the one titled The Hawk? That would be over here. The hawk would be found on page 34. So a table of contents can help me find uh, a particular poem quickly and easily. The Egret. On morning tide, an egret sat and gave the beach a feathered hat. What do you think is meant by that? That the egret gave the beach a feathered hat? Do you think the egret really gave the beach a, fat co a hat covered with feathers? No. If you've ever been to the beach or you've been somewhere where a bird has been, uh, they leave a lot of feathers behind, don't they? Yeah, means that the, the egret has left a lot of feathers behind on the beach. But that's a good description though, isn't it? The green catbird. With feathers of a greenish hue, no doubt I'm difficult to view. On vines and trees, I'm inconspicuous. They call me a cat. Ain't that ridiculous? See it up there. So you're listening for some rhyme in there too. Yeah. The dippers. Through splash and spray of waterfalls, skip the little dippers. I think that they would gladly trade their oily wings for flippers. Inside a stream, they swim up supreme for minutes if they wish. These funny little songbirds who think that they are fish. The magnificent frigate birds. It's true, correct. We do ascend. We really are magnificent. For endless hours, serene we soar, or glide, or wheel. And what is more, our crimson chests we can inflate. How could you not regard us great? The hummingbird. Barely bigger than your thumb. See it hover, hear it hum. With beating wings so fast they're blurred. This helicopter of a bird. It's a good way to describe them, aren't, isn't it? They do look like helicopters. The vulture. Two things I know about the vulture. Its beak is strong. It's weak on culture. The whooping crane. The whooping crane, the whooping crane. So big it's actually a plane. A splendid sight up in the air. It's live and light, but rather rare. It feeds in marshes. See it stoop, this brilliant bird that loves to whoop. The Roadrunner. The Roadrunner darts down dusty roads in search of insects, lizards, and toads. Past tumbleweeds, it speeds for snakes, and catching them, it turns on the brakes. A lot of these poems are very, rather humorous too, aren't they? The Quetzal. The fluorescent emerald tail of the Quetzal grows as long as the bird tail gets all. 
you see that this is a concrete poem, isn't it? It's in the shape of Quetzal's tail. The hill mina. I squawk, I talk, I even sing. My voice can mimic anything. In my tongue, I can converse. I gab, I blab. I'm never terse. I echo every word that's said. A tape recorder's in my head. And the mina birds do repeat and mimic, and they can repeat uh, words and phrases. People talk to them. A royal spoonbill. How fortunate and opportune to have a nose that's like a spoon. Did you descend from royalty? Uh, and is your spoon for stirring tea? Or do you use it as a scoop for eating peas and drinking soup? Wow, I think that little bit of on the wing really gave, gave us a great idea of what these birds look like and what maybe even they act like in the mind of the poet. Hi there, are you ready for a read? In the poem, the Caribbean flamingo, so we didn't get to that yet, we see a red spark and huge flames when the author uses the word ember. We feel heat when the author uses the word conflagration. Poets use certain words and phrases to help you see, hear, and feel things in your mind. This is called imagery. The language appeals to your senses. If you read poetry today, notice if the author uses imagery to help you see, hear, or feel things in your mind. All right, fourth graders, that's all for today. Until next time, we'll see you then. Bye.